So in this week's update from IHME on modeling uh, the COVID pandemic, I think at the high level, what we're seeing is a number of countries that have had their Delta surges peak and are starting to come down more than a week ago. So many countries in Southeast Asia, for example, have peaked with the exception of Vietnam and the Philippines. Uh, we've seen uh, continued declines in all of South America, and we're seeing peaks in the southern states of the U.S., on most states in Mexico, uh, continued declines in southwestern Europe. Uh, and, and so we, at the, if you put it all together at the global level, we're actually seeing new infections or estimated new infections, uh, reported cases and reported deaths starting to go down. In fact, according to our own analysis, uh, estimated uh, daily infections are now at the lowest level we've seen since March. And so that's sort of good news on the, at the global scale. Uh, it is a mixture of places that are, we haven't seen the Delta surge arrive yet. So there's sort of three countries in Europe, as an example, uh, Czechia, Hungary, Poland, where their Delta surges have not unfolded yet, and we expect them to occur, and combined with other parts of the world where the Delta surges have peaked and coming down. Uh, as we look ahead, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere, to the fall and winter, what our models suggest is places that are having Delta surges now that did worse in the last 18 months, i.e. there's more people that have been previously infected, places like the US, for example, uh, we, we may not see a, a true winter surge, we may just see a shoulder season where uh, the current Delta surge peaks, starts to come down, and then we see sort of sustained transmission, maybe slight increases in, in uh, towards the end of the year, but not uh, the big winter surge that we saw last winter. In contrast, many countries in Europe that have had lower cumulative infections so far, we may see steady increases in transmission through to the winter season. But again, the surges should not be as large as last year and certainly hospitalization and death because the vaccines are very effective uh, at preventing hospitalization and death, less so infection. But because of the vaccination, we should not see anything like we saw last winter in, in most of the Northern hemisphere. Uh, if we think about other parts of the world, you know, the, the, the factors that can change the trajectory are quite clear. First, uh, what will be the effect of school openings? We've seen this, the double Delta surge in Scotland, and many attribute that to transmission in schools. And, but we have not seen that happen in other parts of the world yet, maybe. Uh, and so that's a big question mark how much mitigation in schools is necessary to stop you know, rampant transmission through schools. We may see a number of states in the US, for example, with surges coming in mid to late September because of transmission in schools. We just aren't sure. Uh, the other factor, of course, is the evolution of uh, new variants. So there's a lot of discussion, of, for example, about the mu variant. We don't see at the population level evidence that the mu variant is driving population level surges anywhere. That doesn't mean they won't occur, but in the previous four variants of concern, uh, we've seen very clear population level signals that suggest uh, they, are, they are something that can drive transmission uh, up substantially, and we don't see that for mu so far. But other variants may come along and completely change our trajectories that are in the models. Uh, of particular concern for the future will be variants that demonstrate more immune escape. As the world progressively has more and more people that are immune to the Delta variant, either through natural infection or through vaccination, even taking into account that uh, neither is perfect for preventing infection, we still think that by December 1st, about half the world will be immune to the Delta variant. So as time goes by, Fewer and fewer people who are available to, to transmit Delta. 
that changes entirely if there's a new variant that can infect people that have been vaccinated or previously uh, infected with the Delta variant. So that's, that's probably one of the most important determinants of the future trajectory. The other factor uh, that needs to be taken into account, which is not taken into account in our models, is the whole debate about waning immunity. So far, no evidence that protection from vac through vaccination against hospitalization and death wanes. Uh, all the studies show you know, highly sustained protection, but very, lots and lots of evidence that protection uh, through the vaccinations uh, against uh, infection does wane. And once you build that into the models, that means there will be a, 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 you know, more and more people available to sustain transmission uh, later in the year. In, in any uh, case, we expect that there are plenty of people globally and sort of on a country by country basis to sustain transmission well into 2022. And once you factor in new variants, waning immunity, very likely that transmission will be uh, quite broad based throughout the world uh, in 2022 and, and beyond. And the other thing that that leads you to is this whole debate about zero COVID. And I think in a world of waning immunity from vaccination, incomplete protection from past infection, the evolution of new variants, uh, we should not expect that zero COVID strategies are going to work essentially in any country in the long term. Uh, so that's the main points from this week's uh, analysis from IHME.